What's going on guys? Today I will be showing you this more advanced real estate chatbot, how you can make it. This is made by Erding right here. So when we start the conversation, we say hi. The chatbot is going to send us a text, an image, and it's going to offer us some choices right here. So first, it will send this text, hi, I'm Robert, etc. It's going to put in an image. For this, you can use this image uh, field. In the image field, you put in the link to the image and you put in the title of the image. Then you have another text field. Then we have single choice field. So we will put the question right here, what brought you here today? And in this case, we will give them five choices. I'm about to buy, I'm about to sell, etc. We will also store this answer into this variable, who for? Now let's do I'm about to buy choice. Now this is not the best naming of the variables because this chatbot was adapted from another chatbot. You can change the names to be more descriptive. Now let's implement the buying logic, which will help the user buy the house. When the user wants to buy, it's gonna go here and send him this message. And then it's gonna ask him what type of property are you looking for? It's gonna store it into a text variable. This will be a single choice question, single family home, condo. You can add more choices if you want. And then we're gonna have a transition that is true. Condition is true. It will always transition into this area. After that, we're gonna have some execute code. Do not be scared of this. Here we are checking if this variable that they just chose is single family home. Then next message is going to be single family home, great choice. Else, if the variable they just chose is condo, then the next message is going to be condo, great choice. Then we will just write this next message variable that we saved. But don't forget, you need to click somewhere on the dashboard and then you need to make a new variable here and call it next message. Don't forget to do that. The next message variable and the type is string. So because this variable does not exist, if you don't make it. So here in this text field, we're gonna say at next message, which will actually display the value of next message. If I did it without at sign, this would just say next message, like, like next time, like this would just send this text. But when I add at sign, this will now display the value of next message. And the value of the next message we assign here. So workflow.next message, this is the value of the next message. Or in this case, this, this is the value of the next message. After that, we have a single choice question. What area are you interested in? We have Miami Beach, downtown Miami, South Beach. We're gonna say this into a variable again. The name of this variable should be, for example, area, not type of martial art, because this was adapted from another uh, chatbot. You can go ahead and say, this is area, save. And then we are going to transition into the next node. It will first say, great choice. You can have a look at our listings. What is the meaning of this? This text right here, listings, you're gonna be able to click on it and it will send you to link that is written here. So if you say google.com, it's gonna send you to google.com when you click on this text. The text is in square brackets. The link should be in normal brackets. Then we have email capture. Please provide your email, email below. Store in result email. Type is email address. Name, type person name. Store in name. Open-ended. Tell us more about your home or neighborhood features that are important to you and your family. We're gonna save this into the open-ended variable. The input type will be raw input, which just means raw text. Then we have another execute code block. Now this is about Zapier. For now, we are not going to talk about the Zapier API calls, but basically we will use this library Axios to post an API call, your Zapier URL here that you want to post the call to, and then this lead data is the data you specify here. But I will make a separate video about this alone because this is a bit complex topic. It's gonna try to call a Zapier API it's gonna catch any errors. And if there is an error, it's gonna log the error. If there is no error, it's gonna do this. So it's gonna just log the response, it's gonna write the response. This console has nothing to do with your chatbot. This will just write like what this response is so you can see like when you are developing it. Workflow does Zapier success is true. So we're gonna set the variable Zapier success to true. So we know that this calls Zapier successfully. That means that if this returns successfully, it's gonna execute these two lines it's gonna set Zapier success to true. But if this returns an error, then it's not gonna do this. It's just gonna tell you the error. So in that case, Zapier success will not be set to true if it returns an error. And now we need to check if Zapier success is true. If Zapier success is true, this is just the label, just the name. But the condition is important. Workflow.Zapier success. This is how you access all of your variables. You say workflow dot and then variable name because variables are stored in this object workflow. This is how you check if it's true. If I go back and I'm gonna show you 
with only one equal you set this variable to true and then if you do two or three equals then you check if it's true so if Zapier success is true we are going to go ahead and say we'll be in touch with you shortly etc and after that we're gonna always transition so true we're gonna transition to the end and we're gonna end the conversation it says if Zapier success is not true it's not gonna exit here it's gonna go to the next message an error occurred aborting and then always it will always be true it will always transition to Zapier error so this is the error message markdown that I was explaining and then it's gonna end so this was the buy now let's check this one I want to know more about this company that's selling the house so if the user chooses this one we are going to proceed further on to knowledge check when you see this icon right here that means knowledge answering is enabled you need to have this on enabled in that case you can ask a question the question will be capture information field raw input you're gonna say what would what would you like to know we're gonna store it in variable question we created all of these variables here and now when the user asks question because we have knowledge answering enabled it's gonna go here into this knowledge base and it's going to check all of our information right here about our company and it's going to answer based on this information in the, our knowledge base so you can add more and more information into the knowledge base by adding knowledge base source right here if the user asks something that is not in the knowledge base the bot is not going to answer this is the condition that detects if the bot didn't answer and it will transition into this no, no answer which will say we don't have information on that do you want to ask another question yes it's gonna go back into check knowledge and into this question again what would you like to know no I don't want to ask another question it's gonna say it's gonna go here glad to interact with you bye bye so if we do have the answer for knowledge base it's not gonna exit here it's gonna go down here and now it is going to exit here because this condition is true it is going to go towards this node further questions this is a single choice question do you have any further questions yes no yes will put you back into the check knowledge no will sign you out and end the conversation this was the overview of this chatbot i will put some links into the description what do you want to see in my videos next what do you give me some feedback and thank you for watching see you next time